Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for frame rate is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Cowboy, I'm alive. Fight, fight, this is my fight. You are no one and it's unlikely you have this. My friend is bomb, by the way. And I doubt that you have this. Now you go away, na na na. And they're so depressing. Can't make my body stop doing this. Now see. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Brian Brushwood. And this is a very special edition frame rate because we have guests again for the first time in months. What, since, since the beta, since the alpha. Yes. Since the alpha omega beta. It was. It, this is amazing. This is the party edition of frame rate because we're doing fight, a giant fight, cross fight, fight. <laughs> oh, we should yes. explain. That opening video for you audio listeners is called a, um, uh, for, uh, what's her name, Rebecca Black's Friday as misread by a bad lip reader. And so when you're watching the video, all of those absurd lyrics totally match up to her lips, uh, even though the, the words are total gibberish. And I suspect this is the beginning of a whole new movement on YouTube. I think you're going to see a ton more videos just like this. But, uh, Tom, what's up with all these people in our studio? It's well, first of all, right here in the studio is Ms. Sarah Lane. The ballerina? Yes. Where? She'll be joining us shortly. <laughs> And also with us, Sarah Lane. Oh me, yes, of thank iPad you. Today. Thank you, yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I'm I'm excited to be here. I never been in a gang fight before. So <laughs> well, pretty that's stoked. a first time for everyone. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I didn't bring any chicken, but no chicken, uh, no to maybe eat. Maybe next time. Yeah. I did, yeah. but I ate it. So sorry. Of course, okay. Jason Howell, our producer, is here as well. That's right. Hello. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and press buttons. Yeah, keep press, show. pressing those buttons. Mm -hmm. And co co better be on your game, Jason Howell, because I know. it's not just the folks in the studio and me. We also have this weirdo right over here. Yeah. To my left. In the wide shot, you may have noticed a guy who looked from a distance like a scientist in a lab coat, but it's actually Justin <laughs> Robert Young in a white shirt. Uh, Justin exactly. is the co-host of the Weird Things podcast, as well as NSFW show right here on the Twit Network. Is that, what's that to the left of you? An oxygen tank? <laughs> uh, it's no, actually, yeah, it's a <laughs> small droid. Oh, okay. That I uh, keep along with me to fight crime. Okay. That one has a bad motivator. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, it's uh, the the blue blue snowball, which uh, oh, is just, does it speak bocce? Yeah, I don't know. I might. I'll tell you what. It's it's uh, outdated enough that I could probably just play bocce with it. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> We we have a the, these these folks joining us because uh, frame rate this week is also serving as the pregame for NSFW shows summer movie blockbuster draft. 
Yeah, I'll tell you what. We tried something. And I'm throwing the graphic up there just because I really want Jason to put it up there. We're so proud of it. Look at that. <laughs> uh, oh. Last year, we had the idea of wouldn't it be great? We have a bunch of friends who play sports leagues, you know, with fantasy football where you pick your, you have your draft and then you got your players and you see how they do and then you beat all your friends. You get to laugh at them. And we realized that, we, you know, I personally am not a sports guy, but, you know, I do love movies. And for some reason, I'm fascinated with how much movies make. So we decided to create a summer fantasy movie league where what we're going to do is we six players are going to auction off all of the summer's biggest blockbusters and we're going to set prices for all of them we're going to spend our money and then we're locked in and over the summer we'll see whose movies made the most money how would you explain it just robert young uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, if you've ever played fantasy football or fantasy baseball, it's similar to that where you assemble your team. We're basically, we're there, you are the fantasy general manager or owner of a team. Here you are kind of the fantasy studio head. Uh, you assemble your lineup of summer movies, hoping that yours make the most money. And last year, uh, Brian cobbled together a very interesting strategy of picking up a, a lot of crappy movies that weren't going to make a ton of money for little uh, in, in the auction and wound up wanting by stringing together a bunch it's of, called you know, base hits is the strategy, but the important it's called thing, Inception. Yeah. Surprised everyone. <laughs> that was actually it. Yeah, I definitely, definitely bought Inception for sixteen Brian bucks. There's no doubt about it. So uh, here's the other thing: is that it's not just us six players. Imagine that we're the Fed, and once we're done, once we've auctioned off all the movies, those are the set prices. This is the moment that everybody at home gets to play along by looking at the prices we paid for our movies and figuring out where we were idiots, where some, we paid too much or where we paid too little, and then you guys can cobble together your own teams and submit it. So there's two, there's kind of two um, divisions. There's there's the, the podcaster, you know, the twit division, and then there's the, the chat room division. And so you guys can be king of the chat room. I believe the winner last year in the chat room division, his movies and his picks made over $1 billion. So the stakes, the stakes are high, and it's it's so much fun, and it's so silly. But I say, uh, what do you say, Tom? You want to just start plowing through the movies and figuring out what we're most excited about? Yeah, and that will serve as this week's big story. This just in, the big story. It is so summer movie fantasy blockbuster draft time ladies and gentlemen and uh, we have gathered in the nsfw show uh pre-room uh we are we're talking <laughs> to folks we're looking over the uh the the draft possibilities here uh we've got many many movies uh that could go for big money a lot, a lot of sequels as usual brian well, and I'll tell you, sequels tend to go for a little more money than new properties because sequels, and this is something that Hollywood knows, sequels tend to be bankable. When you look at a series that has, you know, year after year done at least $300 million or more on every single show, they tend to go for a lot of money. By the way, if you want to see the list of movies, go to bit.ly slash, that's B-I-T dot L-Y slash N-S-F-W draft 2011. So N-S-F-W draft 2011 on bit.ly and that'll jump you right over to the spreadsheet so you can play along with us but uh let's take a look at the lineup here and i guess we're going to plow through and we should talk not only about what the potential we think for everything is but how excited we are for the different movies and the very first one coming up uh, wow in next week is it this friday tom uh, April 1st, yes. Source Code will be the first uh, of our summer blockbuster season. There's been a lot of geek hype about this. It was shown at South by Southwest. Sarah Lane, this is your first year participating in the uh, in the fantasy <laughs> draft. Uh, when you look at it's something like true. this, do you, do you feel like you're going to be attracted by the hype, or do you think, you know what, that's a niche movie. I'm going to stay away from it. Uh, source Code actually was, was, was not of interest to the actual geeks at South by Southwest. Mm. They just tried to grab the attention of geeks because it's a movie about Source Code and possibly Source Code being stolen and or altered, and Jake Gyllenhaal's in it, and he might take off his shirt at some point. Right. So <laughs> they said Austin is the place to push this and push it hard. So they invited a bunch of tech journalists who write for tech publications to see the movie and say nice things about it. Um, so when you put it into those terms, I think the movie's going to be a steaming pile of garbage. Do you think, Whoa, though, that the, wow, the, Gyllenhaal, uh, the Gyllenhaal shirt effect adds or detracts from the monetary value? Excellent question. Um, I think it adds. I think it adds. But so you're saying. So what you're saying is, shirt or no shirt on Jake Gyllenhaal, you can't polish a turd. 
No, um, I, I don't like the premise of this movie. This movie reminds me of the movie Firewall. You may remember it with Harrison Ford and that uh, woman yes. from Sideways. Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> he did a, uh, a very good uh, Cisco uh, router programming in that movie. I remember I it well. Did, I did not like that movie at all, and this seems like another Firewall to me. Wow. Firewall now, was let me, very let me, just, uh, let me just say this. Uh, I think when it, when it comes to Gyllenhaal uh, taking his shirt off, we can, we can uh, really realistically bank on $10 million per nip. You know, I think that that adds twenty million easy to this uh, this uh, total, and I have to completely disagree. I loved this director's previous work, uh, Moon, Duncan Jones, who mm -hmm. is uh, David Bowie's son. Actually, uh, I loved Moon. I think this movie's got a lot of hype on it, and if it, I mean, it, you, I don't know. I think it's a good buy low, but I wouldn't go over like five dollars for this. Moving on, uh, a week from now, uh, more than a week from now, Your Highness, uh, what is this movie about? Dude, this it's, is the stoner movie. It's only the movie. best movie it's, ever. It's the stoner movie that takes <laughs> place in the Middle Ages. Uh, and if you've seen the previews, now, Justin had an interesting point. He, I thought this was going to be a one-trick pony, but then Justin pointed out that they released a second Red Band R-rated trailer that had not one repeat of the jokes. They were all different jokes, and it was just as funny. So that was your position, right, Justin? That That is going to get very funny? Well, it's, 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 it's a strong movie. A comedies are strong. You can always tell good comedies by how many trailers they release and how many of the jokes hit that are out of context. Because that means that a lot of the movie is strong and it's not dependent on exactly what's happening through the plot. So uh, I think Your Highness is going to be very, very funny. There's another one that comes from uh, a great director in uh, David, uh, I believe David Gordon Green, the guy who did uh, Pineapple Express. And they're the same team behind Eastbound and Down on HBO. So I'm very, very excited for this. I probably have seen... Both Red Band trailers, like 50,000 times. I think they have a great cast. James Franco, Natalie Portman, Zoe Deschanel, to name a few. Are you okay few. with Natalie Portman? You guys... Natalie and I are fine. Okay. We've always been fine. Okay. It's, it's been blown out of such proportion. I'm just glad we could have this opportunity we to are, clear that up. We, we talked. Okay. We are good. Good. We yeah. are good. Uh, in, in your face, Fox News, who got the exclusive on that? Twit, huh? Sup and now. Matt calling it six. Sup now. Um, but but this, I mean, this looks like like a, a Princess Bride. I would like yes. it to be anyway. Uh, Maybe a little I, raunchier. I, I, yeah, I don't. I don't think this is going to do. I don't remember do well. them getting high in Princess Bride. Well, listen, it's it was, 2011. We've all grown up a little bit, haven't we? It was implied. Sure. It was implied that that would happen. Uh, <laughs> I think we can move through Scream Four pretty fast. This is going to be what? a low dollar item, uh, don't you think? Well, I'll tell you, one more thing about your highness. I, I give it a 5% chance of hangover uh, hangover effect. It's got it's got the smell and the pedigree of a comedy that could go the distance where not a lot of comedies make a ton of money in the summer. Well, Great. okay. So real quick, on Scream 5, this is a weird thing because uh, Scream 1, Scream 2, four? 3. Each, I'm sorry, Scream 4. I'm oh. already thinking of 2013. Sorry, bro. Uh, Scream 1, 2, and 3 all made about $100 million each. Uh, with Scream 3 being the lowest at $90 million domestic. Uh, I, so I'm going to say now, now this has that weird effect from being a decade later. So what I'd love to do is go check out how much uh, Wes Craven's New Nightmare did because that was something where you're trying to harken back to an old franchise. So whatever that did, I think, will be indicative of what Scream 4 is going to do. That's all I wanted to say about that one. Since I'd forgotten that the New Nightmare had come out, that I think tells it all. Uh, <laughs> Apollo, Gigaloop in the chat room says Apollo 18 has been delayed. It's not going to come out April 22nd. A lot of people are saying that. That happened again last year. I actually bought a movie that got moved after the bidding. Uh, Meet the Fockers got moved later on, so I was given Kick-Ass as a booby prize. And I want you to know I still won Justin Robert Young. So we'll oh, skip shut up. Apollo 18. Shut your filthy <laughs> mouth. <laughs> but uh, but Fast Five is the fifth incarnation of the Fast and the Furious series. Uh, I've never watched any of those movies. Have you? No, but they always do well at the box office. So they yep. always, they always are good for a solid number two or number three. Fast and this Five. one this one. It's the only reason they keep making them. But they I mean the the titles themselves have gotten really weird. It was the Fast and the Furious. Then right. it was Too Fast, Too Furious, Tokyo Drift. And then it was Fast, no, 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 no. Fast three and Furious. Was Drift. Okay, so then yeah. Too Fast, Too Furious, then Fast and Furious, Tokyo Drift, and then Fast and Furious. So I thought it was Faster and Furiouser. Was, was that never a title? <laughs> no, uh, no, I think oh. it was just Fast and Furious. I think huh. you're thinking And of... now it's Fast Five. <laughs> yep. I, there we go. I can't and it adds, like adds The Rock. So See, there we go. So The Rock goes from oh, making wow. knockoff Fast and the Furious movies to actually being in a Fast and the Furious movie. 
Who knows? Come on. But there's another X factor here as well because Fast and Furious movies all did very well. They all got over 100 million, but we saw the, something weird with with Triple X. The first Triple X got 142 million dollars. The second Triple X made 26 million dollars. Was a massive, massive failure. But that's number so, two. This is number five. And that guy didn't have Vin. That was Vin. As we all know, the fifth movie makes the most money in any <laughs> franchise. No, I, I guess all I'm saying is they actually made enough money off the first four to make a fifth. I think that's this true. Is, I don't think this is going to be a big winner, but I think it'll outperform. I'm, I'm rating this outperform. Are they no longer furious? Just fast? That's right. No, they've calmed down quite a bit. <laughs> okay. I think that's what yeah. the name is. As they get implies. older. Well, you know, as they get older, you get less furious. Yeah. You know, they, they can calm years. each other down now. There's five of them. <laughs> You it's guys, let's be reasonable. And, <laughs> yeah, and they fa got fast breath. and reasonable didn't test well, so they just dropped it. <laughs> it just, we're, we're five. We're yeah. the fast five. Uh, May 6th, Thor, which is part of the whole Marvel comics, Avengers, Iron Man. You know, It was teased at the end of Iron Man 2. Uh, I, I have a feeling that this is going to underperform based on expectations. Expectations are pretty high for this. I w had no interest in this movie, and I thought I thought like you did, and then I saw the trailer, and I really got into it. From what I, from what I understand, the, the the direction is really cool. The way they make Asgard look perfect and magical, and they make humanity look dirty and filthy. Uh, I I have of all the comic book movies this year, I think Thor may be one of the strongest. Natalie Portman's in this movie too. In the world. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey! Now I thought so you guys busy. were okay. All right. We're now, fine. I just, here. I just want to know what, why won't she stop doing movies? Directors can <laughs> <laughs> entirely, <laughs> forever. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think yeah, I think Thor has um, a lot of expectations, especially because of the very, very successful Iron Man series so far. I got to go with you, Tom. I don't. I think. I, I don't know. I don't think people are going to come in droves. Yeah, th this so, is definitely one of those uh, that are going to have, and, and you, I, you can only see like four or five of them on the list, are definitely going to have, no matter what, a gigantic opening weekend. The, the real test of it is going to be, if you're going to spend a lot of money on it, right, is exactly. it going to have that week two and that week three? Mm -hmm. uh, Priest, May 13th, involves vampires, uh, Priest, and uh, 3D. If anyone <laughs> spends a dollar on this, I'm laughing. Uh, dude, uh, let me tell you, but here's the thing. 3D gets an automatic boost in the yep. box office because you can have a poor opening weekend. You can have a poor run and very few people will watch your movie and you can still make decent bank because you're charging double for the tickets. I, I think that's all there is to say about Priest. Now, the, well, the other thing is, do you buy, if you buy Priest, do you also buy Bridesmaids, which comes out the same weekend? So they're up uh, against uh, each uh, other. That's a good point. Bridesmaids has potential to be a hangover, and I think that's what everybody's chasing in the comedy category. Something that was cheap to produce and that could explode out of nowhere. Plus, this has the chick that was in Paul. She was on SNL. What's her name again? Kristen, Kristen Week. Yeah, uh, which she's very funny and, and long overdue, something like this. So this could be huge or it could be a flop. That's the problem. It's got chicks in it, so you don't know if, and, and no offense to my lovely ladies who watch. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> or or Sarah. Know. That's I'm talking to Sarah Lane. Wait a uh, second. Hold <laughs> everything. Hold it. Put it in the closet. What? Shut the door. Because they're women, you just don't know if it's going to be funny. Is that? Did I oh, hear no, that? Oh no, right? no, 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 no. It's not yeah, a matter of. And what? No, ladies aren't funny now. Huh? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm telling you, especially for essentially uh, a, 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 essentially some kind of remake of Bachelor Party. Will, will guys go to see a movie about chicks doing their version of Bachelor Party? It's, it's, it's not in any way a reflection of my beliefs, but a question of America's beliefs. Well, we don't need guys. Just look at the numbers for Sex in the City. That's, that's well. actually, actually true. But I, this is kind of a raunchy comedy, so the, the question could go the other way of, you know, is this the kind of movie that, that you know, female viewers will want to see? The one thing that I will say is that, again, the director is awesome on this, Paul Feig, who did uh, Freeze the Mastermind behind Freaks and Geeks, and he's directed a bunch of uh, awesome Office episodes. All right, uh, on to the next week after that, which is May 20th and features Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. This the is search a, for more this, money. This is also 3D and Kira Knightliness, Knightliness, but they replaced her with Penelope Cruz. Yes! I like yes. it already. Because it doesn't have Kira Knightley? <laughs> I just, I don't know. I had enough. Uh, I will see this movie, um, Johnny Depp. I'll see anything that he's in. And yeah, Penelope Johnny Depp's Cruise. in, but we don't have um, a Lego loss either. Uh, what's his name? Nobody cares about him either. Orlando Bloom. Get rid of both those guys. They were the weakest parts of the other movies. Uh, bring in Penelope. She's going to look 
real pretty and they'll probably kiss. I'll, it'll be good. This is going to make a lot of money. Fine. Johnny Depp this will have a ripped shirt. Yeah. Some you eyeliner. You just stumble around perhaps. and lisp a little bit, get drunk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It'll be a fun time. Big hit. And uh, the dude, dude from Deadwood is uh, Blackbeard. Which pirate. dude from Deadwood? Uh, Al Swearingen, who's Wonderful. Name of- this is going to be yeah. the best movie ever in 3D. Yeah, I think this is a solid hit. It's a hit. Yeah. It's a mega hit. All of those movies made a metric brickload of money. Plus, it's like they figured out a way to get a hundred million trillion dollar bill to have sex with the Hope Diamond and have their offspring. When you take a successful <laughs> franchise and you add the 3D, this is going to be huge. <laughs> and then uh, I guess, you know, that's the end of May and June are re- really when the, the blockbusters start to crank up because May 26th, Memorial Day uh, weekend, you've got The Hangover Part 2 and Kung Fu Panda 2. Two real heavyweight money earners the first time around. But remember, they're going to steal share from each other, releasing on the same day. But you're right. These are two uh, It's two different demos. Yeah, it's going to be a huge weekend. I think this could hurt The Hangover more than it would hurt Kung Fu Panda because parents who would go to see The Hangover on any other weekend and find a babysitter for the kids are probably going to take the family to see Kung Fu Panda, may not have enough time to go watch The Hangover, Although they, it could, it, they could go see it the next week. It, I am that guy. I am absolutely that guy. I will take my daughter to see Kung Fu Panda 2 because we had a great time the first time. And I will just say, oh, I'll Netflix it. I'll see it eventually with The Hangover Part 2. I don't know. I mean, The Hangover was such a, it was such a hit, but so many folks have seen it. I mean, I never saw it in the theater. I saw it on Netflix or something like that uh, way after the fact. And it became a lot funnier like the third time I saw it. So I think Hangover Part 2 is already going into it as this is going to be so funny. Like it doesn't have to prove itself. So it's Absolutely. got that going for it as well. Did you see the trailer I, for Hangover Part 2 yet? Anybody? No. I saw the teaser. Yeah, I saw it. It was a it's just teaser. a teaser trailer. Yeah, yeah but it, yeah. It, it took me from being like, oh, it's probably not going to be as funny as the Hangover to going, wow, that looks like. It looks pretty interesting. Like they, they really <laughs> captured it with the the look of dejection, and they're in Thailand, I think. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, Bangkok. Yes. Yeah, and uh, of course, I'll tell you what. The one the one thing that would have been the seller for me in terms of the movie was the the cameo that wound up getting spoiled because of the casting, where they were going to have uh, they were going to run into Mel Gibson, who had fled to Thailand to become a, a deranged tattoo artist. Uh, and I assume it was going to be like their Mike Tyson cameo. That wound up getting blown out of the water because uh, you know people on the crew didn't want to cast Mel Gibson and yada yada yada. So it's uh, I don't know. I mean, the big thing about comedy sequels is that name the last comedy sequel that was anywhere near as funny as the original. It, it doesn't matter. Very it doesn't matter how funny Empire it is. Strikes it how back. Much money it makes. Look at look at look at the Austin Powers franchise, and it was just dollars after dollars after dollars it kept minting. And that is a rarity, though. I mean, Austin Powers is 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 very much, uh, you know, the, the, the exception gun. to the rule. Scary movie, Crocodile Dundee. Okay, <laughs> I'll 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 give you Crocodile Dundee. That didn't work out so hot. Uh, and then the Make next weekend is something that could go either way. People are very excited about it, but an X Men movie is always a gamble. Remember X Men Wolverine, and we're getting X Men First Class June third. Dude, in your face, because I do remember X-Men Wolverine, the movie that made $150 million. People love the X-Men. And, I'm sorry, uh, as- $180 million. I was wrong. You got to remember, man, it's dollars. You're not talking quality. You're talking hoops. You're talking touchdowns. You're talking knocking it out of the parks. This well, is I mean, our sports you're, you're, you're analogy talking- show. <laughs> yeah, but, but you're also talking uh, whether or not it can go the distance. And X-Men First Class is directed by Matthew Bond, who directed Kick-Ass, which everybody loved, but nobody went to see. This is a movie that everybody's going to go to see because they know the X-Men. It's going to have a ton of hype. It's going to be on every uh, you know Burger King Kids Cup in the world. And uh, you know it could go the distance because it might actually be a really good movie. Do we even really need to talk about the next movie? Super 8? Little well, thing you might have heard. Might. I don't know, J.J. Abrams and Steven Spielberg might generate some small interest. Maybe. Do, do, do you guys see the, the reviews from the 20 minutes that they screened up in New York? No, I haven't. Uh, uh, just glowing. Like, uh, ridiculous. This is, you know, the new Goonies meets E.T. meets Close Encounters for the Third Kind. Me- uh, it's it's the over, lo- over the moon. Felicity? Yes. <laughs> Can we not have Me- Felicity it's- as part of the meet? The meetup. <laughs> I don't want Felicity there. That's alias. <laughs> it's... Now, 
Just for perspective, when you got something that could be the next E.T. and legitimately might be a, a Titanic or, a, you know, one of your biggest movies of all time, what what out of the hundred dollars spent? What's a what's a fair price? Let, let me hear all you guys. I mean, I don't want you to give away what you what your secret price $99. is. Ninety nine dollars. What do you expect Super 8 to go for? <laughs> well, and just and just to to put a context on it, as people have been uh, just legitimately destroying me in the chat room for since this show started i did pay fifty dollars for iron man 2 last year and it did not turn out to be a very very good strategy and i think i spent right. and, and 45 man, on toy story 2 iron man 2 and it kept did, me in the running it did really well right i mean it, yeah but it wasn't worth the fifty dollars of your hundred that you spent on it exactly so i, I could have maybe spread it out a little bit more but i mean i, I think if there is a legitimate super uh you know, thoroughbred that isn't a sequel in this field, Super 8's probably it. Uh, and then the week after that, it goes down, it starts going downhill, and something that I think is probably overperform, Green Lantern, uh, it, it, it's going, it, people are going to go see it June 17th that week. But it, I, I don't think it's, it's going, I, I, I think it's overhyped for the amount of people. People are already starting to d detract from it. But it's still going to be big numbers, right? Well, I'll tell I you what. Think so. uh, I thought... And, and again, like, this is how obsessed with this ridiculous game I am that I, I pulled up comps for all these movies, and I thought, oh, it'll probably be like a Daredevil. Let me see what Daredevil made. <gasps> Daredevil, $100 million. Made what? Hell War 2 made $75 million. So even if it, it's like superheroes bring in the dollars, you know, reliably. Yeah. That's that why they make these movies. It's not dollars. about quality. You're right. You got to remember. I am being told by a friend of Iaz's that Cars 2 is money in the bank, and I have to agree. It's, it's Cars, it's kids, it's, it's good animation. Uh, whether it's any good or not, again, makes Doesn't no matter. difference. This it's is Pixar. This is yeah. printing money. Yep. Pixar uh, makes look. a movie, and everyone will see it. Yep. That's kind of the way it goes. Especially when they do a sequel to one of their movies that was insanely successful. Right. So. I'm supposed to credit well, Angel Mercury for that insight. <laughs> and actually, the funny thing is that Cars 2, the movie, uh, was probably one of the, the least well-reviewed Pixar movies and did not do as well as some of the other ones at the box office, but it is their number one merchandising vehicle. Yes, this is exactly. a movie that is being made to sell because little boys like playing with toy cars and they like it even better when they're voiced by Owen Wilson. That's why this is being made and it's going to make up a bajillion dollars. Now, and if I can, really quick, yeah, go ahead. let me say, for the, for the record, that a lot of people trash on Cars as being the worst of the Pixar movies. Uh, yes, it's a story you heard before. It's definitely Doc Hollywood with the, the Chevron Cars. But when you have a masterful set of performers, I don't care if it's a song I've heard before. I just want to hear them. When I hear some band playing Amazing Grace, I don't think, oh, this song, what is it, 1688 all over again? You know, <laughs> instead, I'm just like, wow, that was a great take. And there's such masterful storytellers at Pixar that, that I, I did enjoy Cars, and I am looking forward to Cars too. Well, it's funny you should talk about covers because our next movie, July 1st, is Dark Side of the Moon Transformers. What? <laughs> oh, wait, no, it's just Transformers Dark of oh, the okay. Moon. Dark Sorry, the I, I misread that. Dude, how much you want to bet that some enterprising theater plays this movie with no audio, but just plays <laughs> the side of the moon to see yes. how it looks up? <laughs> and Shia LaBeouf explains the 2012 prophecy. Dude, how much you want to bet that Michael Bay doesn't put a few things in there specifically? How well, what a great coup would that be if there was a lunatic on a grass? At just at just the right oh, moment. Oh, you know they're they're gonna play three songs from the album just to hammer and like get it. There was an album of this name, huh? But we, it's not even the same name. Robot. Dark of the Moon is not Dark Side of the Moon. Different. But that's what title. I'm saying. It would be great if they kept it low key and they never drew attention to it. And it was something that the fan community discovered on their own. That would be amazing. Uh, uh, always, uh, always the strength of the Transformers franchise: subtlety, Brian. <laughs> yes, way to look out absolutely. For. Well, and and this is the artsy Transformers, right? Uh, this one has Francis McDormand. It has Patrick Dempsey. It has John Malkovich and Alan Tudyk. It has Shia LaBeouf. Oh, and right. Shia LaBeouf, <laughs> but it doesn't have Megan Fox. How did Patrick Dempsey get lumped into the artsy crowd? Yeah, you know, he's, uh, he was there. I'm a, I'm a he was he's in the middle. He was in, and all. Yeah, you know, Grey's Anatomy is real artsy. Full of art. They play lots of songs. <laughs> have montages. Fix people in hospitals. Yeah. Hand washing. He just happened to be between Malkovich and McDormand, to be mm -hmm. honest. But uh, this no Megan Fox. This is the weighty Transformers, right? Is this going to survive the lack of a, of a fox? 
who's Rosie Huntington Whitley? I assume she's the new Megan Fox. She's probably just as good, and it wouldn't take much. Yes. I, I, I'm, I'm going well, to put good. good good in quotes and agree with Sarah. I mean, good as in guys want to spend 10 50 to go see her I, in a, in a bathing she is. suit. That's her. Look, she's gorgeous. Yeah. She's super hot. Apparently, if I remember correctly, she was like Jason Statham's girlfriend or something. Oh. That's right. oh. I remember, I remember the, the headlines when they cast her. <laughs> All right, then we go from uh, then we start to to ratchet down. Once we hit July, we've had the big big names. Uh, this is where it starts to get a little little uh, sketchier as far as you know whether you know something's going to be good or not. Larry Crown is a great example of this. It's Tom Hanks, it's and Tom Hanks and Julia Roberts, and it's yeah, written by Tom ever. Hanks and it's directed by Tom Hanks. Uh, I'll tell you what, I will probably I would not see this movie if it weren't for two words. Brian Cranston is going to be in there. That guy is seriously, seriously funny. And we know him now, of course, from, from his role, his serious role in Breaking Bad. But uh, he was funny in Malcolm in the Middle. Uh, and, and this guy is so good. I mean, he has the ability to really sell comedy. So I, I don't know if this is a rom-com or what, but it's like, I'll go it's see not. it. It's not. No, it's, 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 uh, it's kind of a, uh, a serious movie, I, I believe. Well, it says no, romantic comedy in the genre, but maybe it's a more serious It says rom-com. Rom yeah, no. It's, yeah. He goes back to college. She's the professor. They fall in love. They they kiss, and everybody cares like it's 1998. I feel like everyone still loves. Tom oh, it's a Hanks, it's a dramedy. But, yeah, okay. But this this just I don't know. It's like I can already see the formula. Oh yeah, no. It's it's a little more serious than a normal rom com though. He's fired from his job. That's why he goes back to college. And so the the trailer. Right, the reason I was I was confused is the trailer really plays up that serious aspect of it. Mm -hmm. uh, even if this is a really good rom com, uh, yeah, high level rom com, I don't think it's good for a lot of dollars. No, and that may very well be. Zookeeper comes out July eighth. I don't know anything about this <laughs> other than it has uh, Adam is, Sandler is, in it. Oh the voice. gosh, fucking oh, animals, alone. baby. Just stop. Oh, oh it's bank. animation. Talking animals. It's oh. it's it's oh, Kevin James, different. the zookeeper, and all of the animals start to talk to him. So think. In oh, terms, look at this. Uh, Sylvester Doolittle. Stallone is a voice. Rosario Dawson, John Favreau, except John, uh, Rosario okay. Dawson's Wait, so not a some, voice. Some people are. It's a live action with animated animals. Is that and Sly what's Stallone going on here? So some yeah. people okay. are playing themselves, and some people are just voices. No, everybody's a voice except for Kevin James. Is what it is. Kevin I James see. is like, ah, oh, you're a lion who's talking to me, yeah. and, and ah, I'm a I'm a zebra. Look at me. I'm gonna zebra around, Kevin James. The, think Were in you terms in of movie? night at the <laughs> museum. Yes, this is, I, this am. Is I have a vested interest. Yeah, this is Night at the Museum, and it will make a ton of money because the original Night at the Museum made $250 million, and its sequel made $177 million. And even if you think in terms of, you know, even the Dr. Doolittles, one and two made 144 and 112. So don't count it out. This is a good, solid movie. July 15th, we come back with another. Secret tips. Sorry? I said, I can't believe I'm giving you guys my oh, secret I know. tips. I drew up comps. Why am I sharing this with you? July 15th, <laughs> another good, solid movie, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Final Harry Potter movie. Final book. This second is going regard. to kill it. Gold in the bank. This will kill it. You can actually back your currencies on this film. Mm -hmm. This cannot lose. This might actually be worth the $50 that I paid for Iron Man 2. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know your bidding strategy now. Uh, <laughs> Captain America, the first Avenger, July 22nd. Now that it's back to your superhero tips. Yeah, can I ask uh, yeah, you guys? I'll, I'll like tell you what. This one has actually looked better and better. This is uh, it's a very dicey director, Joe Johnson, who has not really made a, a great movie. He's made a lot of like okay movies, depending on what your taste is. But uh, each trailer that's come out for this, I think, has looked better and better. And I don't know. I think it's the only problem is, is that at this point in the summer, we might be dealing with a little bit of superhero fatigue because not all these superhero movies are going to be good. There's going to be a few stinkers, and people are going to be a little not as super pumped to go see a dude in tights. So who's on Team Captain America? Who's on Team Thor? And what idiot is on Team Green Lantern? Team Green. <laughs> no, I'm Captain America. Thor. You're on you're on Captain's team? Yep, yep. I'm on Thor's team. Uh, I'm gonna go with Captain America. I don't like Thor's hammer. Mm. Well, wow. uh, you don't like <laughs> Looks like it's made of foam. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Thor just because it's easier in the uh, or earlier in the summer. I think it's gonna have uh, Jason? Gonna be more pumped. Mm. Oh, that's true. That's a good point. 
you know, there's superhero fatigue that sets in midsummer. I guess so. Uh, America. Not, I, I don't know. Thor. No, no. Captain America. Yes, Captain America. Okay. Yes. Not, Sorry, the, entire, not the whole country. Uh, no, the entire country is going to do better than both of these movies. Thor or the <laughs> United States actually, of America. I, don't, I, would, I wouldn't take that. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Captain America, I have a better feeling about. We'll see. The very next Don't forget week, Hugo Weaving is in Captain America. Yes. Yeah, next, uh, as we've a, got as Red Skull. And aliens, right? Uh, next week is Cowboys and Aliens. Uh, this is a movie I think will will outperform what people expect of it uh, because, again, director John Favreau, uh, and and then you've got Daniel Craig, Harrison Ford, Sam Rockwell, Olivia Wilde. I mean, the cast is killer, and the name, if we, if we, I, we haven't repeated this enough on frame rate, is Cowboys and Aliens. It's, I'll tell you yeah. what. It's like peanut butter and chocolate. You can't help yourself. It's Yeah, it's like peanut butter and chocolate and peanut butter and chocolate. Right, together. The reason yeah. I know... The reason I know this movie will make a mint is because of my father-in-law. Because I could definitely call... This is, this is an estranged relationship fixer where you take like, oh, you're kind of older than me and you like cowboys and I'm kind of younger than you and I like aliens. Maybe this is a movie we can see together. It's got actors that I know and some you remember from 1977. And then your father-in-law says, nah, rather see the Smurfs in 3D. <laughs> yes. Also released that weekend. Not going to happen. For real. <laughs> uh, I, I want the Smurfs to not make any money. It will make a lot of money because it's a kid's movie. Right. And kids like Smurfs. Yeah. And it's in 3D. Well, and, you know, Do kids still like Smurfs? Look at that weekend or is that lineup? like... Uh, Oh, no. Like, There's a, the whole reason that Apple changed its policy for how in-app payments are handled on the iPad is because of the Smurfs game that had no. in-app payments. And kids were, like, driving up parents' bills with iTunes by buying all this stuff in the Smurfs game. The, uh, right. And I'll say also, don't, don't undervalue... What did the smurfing Smurf happen to my credit card statement, Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> don't don't undervalue like my daughter almost exclusively she's seven years old and she does not want to watch any channel besides boomerang all she cares about is watching the old Hanna barbera stuff and i don't know if it's a case where she has a low tolerance for scary or violent in imagery but she loves Hanna barbera circa my youth then comes probably the most difficult week to call. I mean, once we, once we get past Labor Day, blockbuster season is over. Early August, though, tends to be a risky time to put out a blockbuster. So August 5th, we've got The Change-Up along with Rise of the Apes and The Darkest Hour. Now, Rise of the Apes, that is a, a movie set in, as a prequel to Planet of the Apes, right? That's right. And uh, Planet of the Apes, of course, came out a decade ago, that uh, being Tim Burton's reimagining of the 1970s classic. Um, this one, you know, chronologically starts at the birth of, you know, the Caesar, the first ape to say no, genetically modified and stuff. But Rise of the Apes might have some juice because it's got some, it's got James Franco in it. Uh, it, it looks, it's, uh, this is a movie I care about. I don't know how well it will do at the box office, but again, it'll probably do well enough. The other thing I want to point out is once you get into August and September for purposes of our game, the amount of time movies have to make money gets shortened. If you have a sleeper hit that maybe isn't a giant blockbuster out, out of the gates in early June, but if it sticks around all the way to the first week of August, you can make a lot of money. And that's what you get out of some of the, the rom-coms, the romantic comedies. Whereas some of these movies near the end, we're, we're going to have a hard finish date that I believe is going to be like, what, September 15th, Justin? Is that what we did last time? I think that's what we did last time, yeah. We gave him like a month. Or and, a less, rather. And uh, it's up against the change-up, which is Jason Bateman, Ryan Reynolds, and once again, Olivia Wilde. Dude, her agent is needs to be paid triple whatever he's making. <laughs> Uh, she does uh, everything. Married Guy that, switches that one, that bodies. One, that was a body switching comedy. Yeah. I haven't seen a good body switching comedy in a while. Not since Lindsay Lohan and Freaky Friday. There we go. Uh, what about The Darkest Hour? What is that? Emil Hirsch, I've always liked him. It's a, it's a sci-fi thriller, but I don't know anything more about it. Group of kids it. struggle to survive after an alien invasion in Russia. Uh, okay. That old saw. Yeah. That sounds <laughs> awesome. Why did it you sounds, just? I'd rather I'd rather have somebody in someone else's body. I would probably pick the Darkest Hour out of these three. Although Rise of the Apes, that's eh, pretty compelling. And I, I, none. I'll tell you what. Don't buy any of these three in the in the fantasy draft because they they are all going to just be slaughtered by the other stuff still in the theaters and eat each other up. 
People are also pointing out that this was the same weekend that Scott Pilgrim went to die last yeah, year, yeah. or around the same time, and that was a now, great I movie. Will, I will say that got one seen thing. by nobody. The biggest move I had last year was the one weekend that Prince of Persia came out and Sex and the City 2 came out on the exact same weekend. So I went from like last place with two base hit movies that didn't make a lot of money, but all of a sudden I skyrocketed up to like second place and it wasn't until Inception that pushed me over the top. So don't underestimate the power of owning both blockbusters. Uh, okay. Also, wasn't Scott Pilgrim up against that Sylvester Stallone movie that weekend and it did really <laughs> well because they were like the... The, you know, the, the jocks beat the nerds. I seem to recall that from last year. So no, I think, no, I think no, last year well. it was, it was uh, Eat, Pray, Love came out uh, against the Expendables, if I remember correctly. And it was like, okay. like the dudes beat the chicks. But I think it was around that time. Yeah. Um, and then uh, as we get close to the end of August, August 19th, Conan the Barbarian and Spy Kids 4, all the time in the world. Conan the Barbarian does not trip my trigger from the trailer so far. Uh, and if you're up against a kid's movie, I feel like that that might underperform. Spy Kids is going to make some bank. Conan is a coin flip. If you want to buy low and have a chance to really make some money later on, uh, I'm going to go with Conan the Barbarian because you never know if it's going to turn out to be something just amazing that's going to blow everyone away. They should do some really good product placement on Conan on uh, on TBS. <laughs> like Pepsi? <laughs> yeah. Like, he's like, after slaying my enemies, I enjoy listening to the lamentations as I enjoy a Pepsi product or perhaps Mountain Dew. Yes. Uh, no, on Conan, the, the, the talk show. I'm just thinking they should just, you know, they should oh, work okay. something out with him. Like, I think they should have Conan play Conan. I think and that. I'm pretty sure Why isn't he just Conan the Barbarian in the movie? Right. Everyone yeah, loves I Conan O'Brien. Because he's not a Bad barbarian. Bad casting call. <laughs> I think the, the, the Barbarians should pal around with Andy Richter. I'd prefer that. Yeah. Or Max Weinberg. Uh, Greg Bilton in the chat room says, I think Conan will be another MacGruber. And if you don't know, MacGruber was legitimately, by all accounts, by all the reviews, was a very funny, very well-done movie. It only made $8 million in the theater. It was yeah. a massive... Lowest business. grossing summer comedy ever. Yeah. So or, it, or it could be... Weekend. Yeah. That, it could be the, I mean, look, Hollywood's learned its lesson. It knows that money does not necessarily go to the movie that deserves it. You know, the, mm -hmm. it, it, money goes to the movie that gives people what they expect to see for their dollars. And then August 26th, Final Destination 5. If they haven't died yet, hopefully they'll all die in this one. Dude, I love the Final Destination series, especially... Uh, starting at Final Destination 2 when it stopped taking itself seriously and it became a game where every scene began with, all right... How is he going to get it? Will it be the garbage disposal? Will it be the microwave on the fritz? Will it be the computer he's holding? No, he'll escape until the ladder goes through his eyeballs. It, it, I love those movies, and I think it's going to make good money. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be it, a, a non-touted solid moneymaker. I think well, so. I mean, it's, it's also going to be it's gonna be 3D, and like, like Brian said, it, it's basically, you know, mousetrap with teenaged murder. So, uh, you know, and also... You don't hey, listen, think kids. the number five um, inspires fatigue, even with Final Destination fans? Did Saw peter out at five? Because they no, kept sharing yeah. those things well, out around the same I concept you, I guess and still right. made a lot of money. I guess you're right. Uh, and, and you know what, kids? Listen, it's the end of the summer. You want one, one last chance to make out with your summer girlfriend in the theater? Here we go. This is your, this is your event. Final Destination 5. Hit it up. All right, uh, we're going to pretty much wrap up frame rate. Uh, this 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 took up uh, most of the show. Uh, just a, a real couple of notes. Uh, congratulations to Futurama on being renewed for the seventh season. And uh, in the film film uh, section, we would uh, normally talk about films we've been watching. And Brian, you you watched uh, one li live, right? Uh, yes, dude. I saw a very very big movie this week. I watched. The remake of The Karate Kid, starring Jaden Smith and Jackie Chan. And let me tell you, it was on Netflix streaming. I was very excited about it. I watched it with my daughter. Uh, they hit all the beats of the original movie. They, uh, they, they had their own take on it. It was interesting to see the things that they had to change for Chinese versus Japanese culture. Obviously, it's Mr. Han instead of Mr. Miyagi. It's Kung Fu instead of Karate. Uh, wait, is that not the movie you were talking about? Yeah, I, I, no, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that that that's the movie that I, I thought you'd you'd watched. Uh, you said you'd watch something live with somebody famous. Oh, I guess I guess last night I did go see Red State with Kevin Smith live. <gasps> Kevin Smith 
definitely sat right behind me and live tweeted during this whole show. And while he was sitting right behind me, I thought, this will be great. I'll wait till some moment during the movie. I'll get up and I'll go ask him to be on NSFW. But here's the, the, the flaw in my plan was that I bought a ticket. I actually didn't buy a ticket. Actually, my friend Jeff Hyman, who arranged the Red State Tour, got me in. Uh, but, but I went in thinking oh, I'm going to get to see some version of Smodcast live, and all I have to do is sit through a Kevin Smith movie. But to my utter surprise and amazement, Red State was phenomenal. It was like nothing I had expected from Kevin Smith, and it really shocked me. And, and again, let's take the spoiler alert to Orange on this one, because I'm going to talk about the tone okay. of this. So one of the things that he said on stage, and I love the, the metaphor, is he says, he says that uh, it's like he sets up an, a row of chairs because he wants you to be perpetually uncomfortable and keep shifting your perspective on what you think this movie is. He talks as though the, that this is a movie that could never possibly be a commercial success, and that's why he's using the distribution model that he is. Uh, and maybe he's right, maybe he's wrong. I think he's wrong. I think it actually will, will make a little bit of money on, uh, or pretty good money uh, through traditional distribution, but he's absolutely right when he says that it's something that starts off looking like a Kevin Smith movie and then all of a sudden switches. There's one very massive event and then all of a sudden it becomes very much a horror movie. And you think you know this horror movie. You think you're watching a hostel or some kind of torture porn movie, but then all of a sudden there's another major event that changes again and the best part is like, like I don't know, three quarters of the way into it, there's a massive, massive change, and all of a sudden, you're watching a Coen Brothers take on a horror movie. It is, it was, I really look forward to watching it again. Um, I, I don't want to overhype it, because I went in with medium expectations. I was like, hey, people seem to say this is a good one, so I'm sure I won't waste my time. But I was no lie blown away, and because I was so engaged with the movie, I never got around to turning around and asking Kevin Smith, who was two rows behind me, to come on NSFW. But luckily... After, and this is this is the little news thing here. Luckily, afterward, he was in one of his tweeting moods, and I hit him up afterwards to tell him the story, and uh, he's actually said he will come on NSFW right here on the Twit Network. We're working on his publicist to pick, figure out a date that works. Absolutely Sweet. awesome. Okay, cool. Uh, and final note, uh, congratulations to all of you for your hard work and getting Fringe renewed for yeah. another season. Yes. Yeah! Yeah! I, and I, I guarantee you, the fact that it's renewed and it's still on the table and that it's an ongoing project means that I am 100% in. That's going to be my next thing that I dive into will be Fringe. I, fi I finished the Venture Brothers, and I never got a rusty venture. Uh. I'm rusty. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, that's it for uh, Frame Rate. Uh, if you're curious how this all plays out in the Blockbuster Draft, be sure to tune in to NSFW Show, either live or on Tuesday night, if you're watching this live at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern, or in a podcast near you at twit.tv slash NSFW. Uh, Justin Robert Young, thanks for being on the show, man. Uh, thank you very, very much. I'm very much looking forward to the uh, fantasy draft, and it's great to be on uh, Frame Rate. Watch him on Weird Things and NSFW Show. Sarah Lane, thank you for being on. Great to be here. It was fun to talk about summer movies with all y'all. Check out Sarah's new show, The Social Hour, on twit.tv. That's it for me and Brian. We'll see you next time on Frame Rate.